Greetings, Three Rivers Christian School. My name is Jamie Johnson. I am one of the campus pastors at George Fox University down in Newburgh, Oregon, and I'm so glad to be spending this time with you. I was reached uh, by Mr. and Mrs. Toms, who I am sure are two of your most favorite teachers, to be able to share just a, a short message with you for your online chapel and uh, certainly the the times that we are experiencing now are not times that we expected. And I know that your teachers and your administrators have done a ton of work to make sure that your education can continue on this year until the summer comes. And I know that you students have also worked incredibly hard um, in new settings and in new ways to be able to do the work um, that is required of you. And so I am just so blessed and thankful to be here um, sharing with you this morning and, um, and, and I'm excited to share with you one of the favorite stories that I have from the Bible. It comes from the Gospel of Mark. Before we dig into it, let's pray. God, we are so grateful for your presence here, even across the digital divide. Um, and we know that you are at work, that you have been at work. Would you open our ears and our eyes to see how you are moving, not just in this story, but also in our lives, uh, that we would be uh, more in love with you, uh, more willing to serve you, more ready to, to seek you in, in all of these things. We love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. The story I want to share with you this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark chapter 8, and this is how it goes. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They've already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered them, but where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over, about 4,000 people were present. The word of the Lord. This is one of my favorite stories in scripture for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we see Jesus having compassion on those who had come to listen to him. And now it's important for us to realize that those who had gathered to listen to Jesus over those few days were a range of people, some who had already committed their lives to following Jesus, but some who were just purely interested, who had heard about the things that Jesus had been doing and saying, and uh, wondered who he was, wondered why he did what he did. And so they had come to listen to Jesus, to learn from him. And I'm sure in those crowds were also people who were skeptical, people who were looking to find fault with the things that Jesus was doing. And all of these people were gathered, no matter what they believed, no matter where they came from, uh, to, to listen, to learn from Jesus. And he had taught them and he had shared with them great insight. And then he had also realized that these were actual people with him who, along with experiencing maybe some fatigue or tiredness, were also hungry. And so Jesus called his, his disciples to him and he gave to them a seemingly a simple task, right? Feed these people. But the disciples, being ever the practical people that they are, said to Jesus, we can't. It's not possible. The thing that you are asking to us to do, we are not able to do. We only have a few loaves of bread. We only have a few fish. In fact, Jesus, what we have is just enough to really feed us and no one else. I wonder how often you, like me, find yourselves in similar situations in which you feel like God is asking you to do something or leading you in a certain direction, 
and you just aren't quite sure that it's possible. You look at the thing that is before you and it seems like something that is either impossible or really difficult or you just can't see how it could be done. The disciples feel the same way. And there they are faced with this invitation that Jesus is giving to them to feed the people gathered. And they have an excuse. They say back to Jesus, we don't have enough food. Let's just send them back to where they came from. And Jesus, in the way that he does so beautifully, he just asks them a simple question. And it's a question that I want you to ponder as um, you think about who Jesus is in this story, who Jesus is in your own life, and how Jesus might be actually calling you to respond to his work in your own life. And the question is simple. The question is this. What do you have? See, in the disciples' belief that they didn't have enough to do what Jesus was calling them to do, his question to them was very simple. Well, what do you have? Show me, bring it to me, offer it to me. And as they offer it to him, Jesus multiplies their gift. He multiplies their food. He multiplies it so that not just those few disciples are able to eat, but the thousands who are gathered there are able to eat. And there's leftovers. What do you have? That's the question that Jesus asks his disciples, and it's the question that Jesus is asking you and I. Now, the times we have found ourselves in are uh, times that are uh, nothing that we could have ever imagined. None of us thought at the beginning of this year that we would finish our school year online. None of us thought that the things that we were most looking forward to would be canceled, that we had been planning for, that we had been training for, that we had been attempting to um, do one last time. I, I think particularly of you seniors who have um, had to uh, totally change your ideas and dreams for what your senior year would be. You perhaps had different uh, sporting events that you were looking forward to, different seasons that this was going to be your last season to play your sport and you didn't get to do it. Maybe there was a, a concert that you were hoping to attend or an event that you had saved up money for. Maybe there was a family vacation that you had planned or senior trip that you were hoping to go on. And just all of those things were canceled. And as I found myself in similar situations in which the things that I was most looking forward to, the things that I was most hoping uh, to have happen, just being taken away and not happening. I found myself wrestling with a bit of uh, bitterness in some ways, of sadness. And I think uh, that that is uh, an appropriate response. And maybe when I think about the way that the disciples responded to Jesus, it, it's even kind of natural. Like, uh, really, this is what we're supposed to be doing? This is the plan that you had for us? The disciples see the thousands gathered there and Jesus says to them, I want you to feed them. And, and they say, we can't. Why would we ever think that we could with the few things that we have? And we've been faced with similar, uh, similar experiences where uh, even now we see the things before us, the things that um, we've been asked to do, and, and we question whether we can do them. And, and maybe we have done them, but we, we haven't done them with a joyful heart. And I love what Jesus does in this story for two reasons. One, he doesn't ask the disciples to give to him something that they don't already have. He asks them what they have at that moment. And two, what they do have, he takes and does something miraculous with. What is it that you have? 
What are the gifts that God has given to you? What are the opportunities that you have been given? What is it that you have? And how can you bring those things to God, knowing that God can use them, wants to use them in ways that are incredible, that are miraculous, that will touch the lives of thousands of people? What do you have? And maybe as you look at the things that you have, as you take inventory of the gifts that you have been given, as you, as you think about who you've been created to be, what you envision is something that is not quite like you want it to be. Maybe it's a little broken. Maybe you've gone through some really hard things and you're not quite sure how you could ever recover from them. And yet Jesus is saying the same thing. He's asking the same thing of us. What do you have? Not what do you hope to have? Not do you think you'll have? Not what did you used to have? But in this moment right now, here in this place in which we find ourselves, what do you have? There's this ancient Japanese practice called Kintsugi in which these artists take broken vessels, broken mugs, broken plates, broken pieces of pottery, and they mend them back together with gold. They fill in the little cracks with gold, which mends the broken pieces back together into one piece. And not only is it one piece that is functional, but it is a piece that is stronger because of the gold. It's a piece that's more beautiful because of the gold. When I think about the work that Jesus is doing in what we are bringing to him, I think of Kintsugi. I think of our brokenness in the midst of the gifts that we've been given. And that as we bring them to God, as we gift them to God, as we, as we say to him, here's what I have. He takes it and he mends it. He multiplies it. He makes it more beautiful than we could have ever imagined. And then sends us back into the world to use that gift in ways that feed thousands in ways that change the world, in ways that, that make, like Jesus prayed, God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. I don't know exactly what you're feeling as you're watching this. I imagine it's a bit of um, a feeling frustrated with our current situation Perhaps there is some joy that you have in, in the school you're almost being done. Perhaps there's some hope that you have in life getting back to the way it was sooner rather than later. No matter where you find yourself on the spectrum of emotion, God is asking you the same question. What do you have? Not what will you have, not what did you have, but what do you have right now? And as we bring those gifts to God, he is making them into something that is beautiful, that is strong, that is resilient. He's making us into something that is beautiful, that is strong, that is resilient. That is going to change the world in ways that can only be changed by God, working in you and through you for his glory. There's nothing that we can do to get back the things that we have lost. But there is something that we can do, even in this moment, and that is to bring to God what we have and watch as God multiplies it in our lives and in the lives of those around us so that everyone who comes into contact with us, everyone who comes into contact with you, will know that it is God who is at work 
in you and through you. And that is God who is inviting you and everyone else into a relationship with him that will feed you, that will sustain you, that will do in you and through you more than you could ever imagine on your own. The question that Jesus asks us today, what do you have? How would you answer that? Bring that to God. Let him multiply it in ways that will make you more beautiful, more resilient, and make your witness in this world something that other people cannot deny. Let's pray. God, we are broken people who, when uh, asked by you to do certain things, have excuses, like the disciples did. And yet, um, you are simply asking us what it is that we have. And as we bring it to you, you multiply it. As we bring it to you, you uh, do what only you can do with it. And so, God, we bring to you our gifts. We bring to you our frustrations. We bring to you the things that we're sad about. We bring all of it to you and ask that you would, that you would mend us, that you would uh, remake us, that you would um, do the work that only you can do, that we would be people who see your miraculous work, who testify to your name, and who, um, no matter where we go, uh, are singing your praises. God, you love us. God, we love you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Three Rivers Christian School. Thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Toms, for inviting me to come and be a part of your chapel. Um, I pray God's richest blessings on you as you finish up your time uh, this year. And seniors, as you head off into whatever is next for you, may you go with God. Uh, may you be people who are spreading God's good news uh, throughout the land, whatever it is that you will be doing. And for the rest of you, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, teachers, um, administrators, may you experience God's love for you in beautiful ways that Three Rivers Christian School would become a place um, even more than it is now that is known uh, for uh, doing God's work in your classrooms, in your relationships, in your community, and throughout the world. You all are doing great work, um, and bring what you have to God and watch him multiply it. Blessings, and I will see you soon.